Greetings and welcome back once again. This is Amuna Yisrael weighing in on the Solonomics perspective of some latest madness that's going on. So apparently everybody is like all over the place. I'm late because I'm always late because when I see something, I got to do more research. You know, I got to dig in a little bit. So I'm late on this whole Instagram little Kim, what's going on? What's wrong with her? Why she look like that vibration, right? Again, for those who don't know, Soul Anonymous is all about healing soul injury. It's all about coming into your purpose, discovering who you are through simple um, do-it-yourself methods. And so I wanted to learn a little bit. It's been years. I haven't listened to this stuff from, you know, for over 20 years now. I really, I really don't get down like that. So I had to go back and listen to when she first started, listen to some old interviews. Um, I watched Driven Behind the Music and hear family members telling the story of little Kim when she was still brown, right? So basically they go into speaking about her family, the fact that her father was a military, her father and mother had a troubled relationship. They came a point where they're divorced. She had an option, she chose to go. Why is this all important? Because again, whatever trauma happened in her mind, um, this is what we're seeing only years later like this didn't just begin so most people is not gonna really do this They say oh, what are you trying to psychoanalyze? No, if we do this if we learn to do this if we learn to do it for ourselves first Then we'll have more understanding and we'll have less useless vain chatter, right? And so uh, apparently she sustained a soul injury earlier on in life long story short She chose to go with her mother her mother had it rough. She ended up um, Losing a child she had to go back when she was a teenager. She had to go back to the father this is their this is their report not mine um, in the driven uh, documentary she had to ended up going back to her father's house her and her father because of his strict rules and you know the freedom so now that explains why when she comes out she's looking for this attention in this very aggressive type of way in this very overtly sexual type of way um, there's some injury that happened with a masculine energy whether it be like I said before his strictness whether it be she's not getting nourishment in that area so long story short she leaves her father's house according to their testimony and she ends up on the street having to hustle having to do whatever she has to do and during that time her mother was like kind of a fashionista she loved the thought of attention all eyes on me ever since she was young she gravitated towards music because she had a um cousin who was into music and this that and the third so this is all that goes into the making this is the formula this is what goes into what we're seeing now you understand? According to her, there's some things going around. Actually, no, I saw the interview. It was an old BET interview with Tavis Smiley. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put the links so you can see it for yourself. So it's like, so that we don't just ask the question. If we really want to understand, let's try and understand. So she, she's talked about having uh, low self-esteem um, because people, the way people interact with her, men especially, telling her that she was ugly, things of this nature. And she said that years ago, I think in the interview she said she was 21 years old. And uh, Luke was also on the panel because at that time in the 90s, this was overtly sexual. It was, it was Little Kim is the one who took it to another level. And it wasn't in a good way. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't in a good way. It was progressively getting it, I push it and all that stuff. But she took it over. What I found real wild is after she met Biggie, according to her testimony in one of the videos I watched, I can't remember which one at this point. She was like, it was Biggie's idea for the crotch shot. Okay, people like, what's wrong with little Kim today? Okay, what was wrong with little Kim at that point when she thought it was all good to do a crotch shot and have it all around town? So my point is, it didn't just go wrong when she bleached her skin. Now this skin, skin bleaching, this skin bleaching lightening epidemic is not just one that has to do with people in America. It is all over. It is in Africa, it is in India, it is in China, it is in the Caribbean. This is the racism, white supremacy thought process that right is white and if you black, get back. You understand what I'm saying? And so she has also fed into this. If we fast forward a little bit, cause I'm like, okay, maybe what's the injury with her specifically? Whatever her interaction is with light-skinned women as it related to men not committing to her, one thing that I did find that they spoke about was the Biggie and Faith Evans conversation. For those who are really young, you're probably not going to know what in the world I'm talking about because this was a while ago, okay, like 20 years ago. 
going 20 years now. But Faith Evans enters the scene. She's she's um the ride or die B, which I don't like that terminology, but that's for another show. So Kim is the ride or die B, and all of a sudden this light skin, bright, long hair looking half Italian, because I heard an interview with Faith Evans, I didn't know that, she's half Italian, so again, she comes in, and in three months, not three months, three weeks, Wallace, Mr. Wallace, Biggie Smalls, marries her, this causes confusion, this causes contention, this is another blow to the ego, okay, because I'm not white, or I don't look like this, or my nose doesn't look like this, is this why you don't want me? When everybody's asking what happened to little Kim, I'm saying it happened a long time ago. According to the reports, she was doing it incrementally. She started doing it over 10 years ago, incrementally, whether it be the nose, the face, the lightening of the skin, so this is the final that we're seeing. Um, so that, I'm not saying that's, it's, it's not right. The standard of beauty is being measured again by racism and the white supremacy and the thought that slim nose, light skin, straight hair, this is the standard of beauty. And there is an awakening. There's a re-emergence of no, I no longer subscribe to that. I am going to hold on to who I am and celebrate me. And we see that amongst our, our melanated sisters across, it's, it's catching across the road your head wrap and your, your afros or your locks and all of this things like this, but she is stuck in, little Kim is stuck in that space and time where, you know, you still need to look like the oppressor. It's not a good thing. It had to deal with her self-esteem and her self-esteem was injured a long, long time ago. Is it an excuse? No, it's the reality. And the truth is, a lot of men, just like in the case of, of Biggie Smalls, Christopher Wallace, a lot of men, it's okay to have a dog skin, a melanated sister when you broke. It's okay for her to go through the trenches with you. And this is not complaining. This is, this is some of the realities of what we're seeing. It's okay for her to be in the trenches. But as soon as you get some money, as soon as you're going to transition, you need also to transition in color or transition with someone of another persuasion. This is a blow to the self-esteem of your sisters, of your daughters, of your mothers. And a lot of people say, oh, this is, you know, no, it is what it is. So again, I just wanted to give you my thoughts, Solonomics um, perspective that uh, she had some other things going on. All, a whole lot of things it seems like just piled up. If you have to live a life, say you, say you made an image for yourself, being this lewd, forward, uh, you know, over-sexualized individual. How do you step out of that? How do you say, I no longer be, want to be that, when this is what you've made your name on? And there's an example in um, Jamaica, one Jamaican artist named Lady Saw, everybody knows Lady Saw. Lady Saw is the little Kim of the Caribbean. I think she even goes <laughs> over the top further than she does. You know, Lady Saw is broke out, dance all, carrying on and carrying on. Recently, Lady Saw is like, I want to put that down. I don't do that anymore. Everybody's looking at her like, allowed to do that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And still eat. You're not allowed to do that and still, you know, what are you going to rhyme about now? So we have to understand that um, this supersedes the entertainment industry, but it's very present in the entertainment industry. It's very dangerous. Some of these skin bleaching things that people are using, it is cancer, carcinogenic, cancer causing, um, skin eroding uh, type of thing. So it's not only the mind, it's also your body. Uh, so definitely stay away from the ambi, you know what I'm saying? Start trying to use cake soap to bleach your skin. Um, start to learn to accept who you are and it is a process but it also is both ways because if you begin to accept who you are and your counterpart the male counterpart still rejects you and still goes after the exotic one then it's still gonna it's still gonna affect your mind because you are trying to perfect your beauty um, this is how nature works right I think that's how nature works to attract the opposite sex and so if you are beautifying yourself in this way and the opposite sex is still not attracted to you in your natural state, that causes a problem. So hopefully uh, that shed some light or brought back some things to your remembrance that you may have forgot about this whole Little Kim situation. You never see, um, don't just think just because everybody's on the hype about it, you got to jump on the hype. If you really, really want understanding, take some time to see it. I'll leave you with uh, a proverb that my mother would always say. And when I was young, I couldn't take when she would say it. But it's true. She would say, it's, it, let me see, let me say it in English, right? It's not the 
same day that the leaf drops on the water does it rot. And in Patwa, I know the same day a leaf drop of water and rot. Meaning, just because what we're seeing now, it didn't just happen now, it happened a long time ago. So if you have daughters out there, let's get, let's get to now. If you have um, sons out there, because there's some men who's bleaching their skin too. If you have any loved one and you see this behavior start, where they begin to idealize something, a beauty that is outside of them, where they no longer see or they have never seen the beauty in them, where you color classify your children. You know what? Before I go, let me just say that. I think Caribbean people have a way of doing it, and I'm not sure if our brothers and sisters here in America does it as well to the degree, but stop clutter classifying your children. Oh, your brony, oh, your darky, oh, your lighty. I know here they'd be like, oh, dark skin, red bone. Stop. Stop. What are we? What are, what are you doing? Making a painting? Listen, they're beautiful for what they are. If you begin to make them overtly color conscious of the, the degree of their pigmentation, unless you're trying to run some science experiment, it's really not that necessary. And what you do is cause an injury within the mind to say, they're going to look to say, okay, this person looks like this and they get better treatment. And I look like this and I get lesser treatment. We need to start to detox this master's voice because that's the master's voice. When you would run away and your four parents would run away, when he goes to the printing office to put in that report of the advertisement, he'll be like light mulatto, curly hair certain disposition. He's describing your stats. This is what he would use to classify you. This is what they would use to classify you. And you're still using it to classify yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So please, when you have the young ones growing up, I have children, they're different hues. I don't make it a deal because it's really not. We're all melanated. You understand? They will notice, oh, wow, you know, you're a little bit. But it's not something, because my parents, when I grew up, we didn't have that. But I also, in an extended family, we do have that. Them lighty, them darky. What's that? What's that? All it's doing is causing further injury. So, again, I don't know what environment she grew up con um, as it related to light skin, dark skin, um terminology but it's definitely here and present and we definitely need to take a look at it because if we don't if we take these new stories to for just hype then you have absolutely wasted your time but if you could take these news stories as warnings, as what to look out for, as telltale signs, so that you can turn around in your actual environment where you actually have a voice and it actually matters, and say, you know what, oh man, I see danger coming. You know what, you may tap a mother on the, the thing and say, look, don't do that. We have to use the things that we're hearing some, so that they can better us as opposed to making things work and just something for us to sip our tea to and get too loud for. for. That's a waste of time. So until next time, a little bit turned up, but it's all good. My name is Imuna Yisrael, and I pray. And I saw that lemonade business. That might have to be another video because, yeah, no skin bleaching. Say no to skin bleaching. Love your brown skin. <laughs> All right, one. <laughs>